getting right in the middle of the action, just getting started, but we're all warmed up and ready, ready to let go. So we're doing hamstrings, glutes, and calves today. We got Prince and Andrew Jack doing the business, and I'm going to be dictating what happens in this, this session. So uh, I'm going to talk along the way, try to explain what I'm trying to do, and uh, hopefully you guys learn something for your arsenal that you can apply to your repertoire. We're doing a super high volume day on the hamstring today. So the weight won't be super crazy, but the reps and the squeezing will be instrumental in this workout. And if you've noticed in previous videos, I talked about Andrew being a new bodybuilder. Now, he's not new to weightlifting, he's new to the world of bodybuilding. And that's actually working to a purpose, or, or the word is hypertrophy, muscle hypertrophy, and uh, sculpting the body. Now, Andrew is working at a purpose and trying to sculpt this a, a physique that can rival other bodybuilders. So, this is a hamstring workout. I don't count the sets. I may count the reps, but this one is going to be very high volume. So, we're going to do set after set after set, rep after rep after rep. Not too much squeezing in this one because we're just, we're just going for volume. So, this is a volume workout. So, as you see here, we're on the lion leg curl. And then we're gonna go to the standing leg curl, and then the seated, and then we're gonna go directly work the glute. Now I'm doing the glute last because I don't want the glute to get big, so I'm trying to burn off some of the glycogen before I get into actual glute, uh, to, uh, directly attacking the glute. And then we're gonna do some things with no weight, actually a, a one-legged squat, keeping it real low, keep all the tension on the glute. So just sit back, watch it, not much to explain here, I think you guys will get the feel. straight for volume so the form is going to be a little bit off i do that from time to time i kind of will go the regimented form and like being this particular monster that, must, that the set must be done uh proper and correct all the time sometimes it gets a little sloppy sometimes we are going straight form but not today this is all about volume and just pumping those uh, hamstrings up This machine actually came from the Raiders training, training camp. Uh, it's a really good machine and uh, I don't know, I believe in heritage and so many champions and professionals touch this machine, I had to have it. It's really smooth, it works really well. So of course I powder coated and repatted it. And, but almost 90% of everything in this gym is actually refurbished equipment and uh, for cost and I, just, and I like the way old equipment feels opposed to new equipment. 
There are some new pieces I like, but primarily I'm building old school bodies and I wanted old school equipment to do that. Redondo Beach, California, it's a pretty hot day. So this building is not very well insulated. I do have air, but I never run it. So it's about 85 degrees in here. So I gave the guys a break and I'm not gonna uh, close all the doors, but primer, sometime I close the doors on the guys and really heat it up. If uh, the guys aren't coming into shape, I will close all the doors, but Andrew seems to be right on track. So a little air, but it was about 85 degrees in here.
That's it, right there. That's it. Uh huh. Uh huh. Good job. Feel it? But I do want to talk about being who you are. Now, Andrew was a new bodybuilder and he's destined for great things, God willing. But sometimes in this path of bodybuilding, we can really try to achieve something. And then when we achieve it, we're very surprised of the outcome or the cost of it. So on this little speech I'm about to do doesn't necessarily need to apply to bodybuilding. It can apply to anything. So what I notice with young athletes about anything in life, let's say they want this car and they, they save their down payment. They work hard to afford the monthly payment and they get this car. They can fit the insurance. They fit everything, but they don't take into account the maintenance that goes along with this expensive vehicle. They don't take, take into account that this vehicle is on the high on the theft list where people really want to steal this car. They don't take into account the maintenance or the upkeep on this car. These are things they may not account for. And I'm just speaking about a car, but it could be a house. It could be a profession at work. It could even be a girlfriend or a boyfriend. Sometimes be careful what you ask for. You get it. There's always a price to pay with that. So how do we avoid not losing ourselves in our newfound uh, fame or newfound riches or our newfound status in society? We have to know who we are before we go in. We have to know our price before we sit down at the table. So if we go to a party and I say, hey, I'm gonna do some, I'm gonna have a drink, but I'm not gonna do drugs. Or I'm gonna smoke marijuana, but I'm not gonna do cocaine. I know this sounds a little weird, but sometimes you can lose yourself in this world of bodybuilding. You can lose yourself in the world of music or, or movies or acting, anything like that. So you have to know who you are as a person before you go in.
price. Everything we do is a price. It can be a monetary price. It can be a price in time. It can be a price of uh, your intellect. Everything is a price. Everything that you do is a price. But you have to know how much of yourself you're willing to give up to achieve that price. Don't let someone else dictate who you are or what you're going to be or the price you're going to pay. Always let you know, if I'm going to give myself five years to become a professional bodybuilder, and once you get to six years, seven years, you know you're not the same person anymore. You're actually compromising yourself. You have to understand that. You always have to be real with yourself or what your expectations are, what your limits are. And once you do that, why are you doing it? Why are you becoming this professional body better? Is it just to be better than other people? Or are you doing it to actually help other people and encourage other people to strengthen other people? We all have power. Are you using your power for good? Or are you using your power for evil?